Today we're reviewing the book The Education of the Child and Early Lectures on Education by Rudolf Steiner. This is part of the Foundations of Waldorf Education series published by Steiner Books. So these education lectures by Rudolf Steiner actually predate the Waldorf School in some cases by as much as 10 years. So 10 years before the first Waldorf School, actually 12 years before the first Waldorf School, Steiner was already speaking about how education ought to be different than the way it was done. And it's interesting, too, uh, to speak about education reform in 1906, 1907, um, in those years, was, on the one hand, a very um, popular, a very contemporary thing to do. Uh, this was a time in which there were a number of educational reform movements either already underway or um, in the process of coming about. So in this regard, uh, Rudolf Steiner wasn't all that unusual in being another person calling for education to be undertaken differently than how it had been done up until then. And at the same time, Steiner is um, going to go his own way for his own reasons with this book, and that is, and, and the lectures and presentations, and that is Steiner was operating out of a um, spiritually based worldview that saw the uh, developing human being as a, um, a person of spirit, an individual with destiny, and um, an individual with inner capacities that he or she needs to learn to unfold properly in the context of the world as it is. And so the, uh, the education, one of the aims is uh, it's an education of liberation rather than an, an education um, of forming people to the demands of society or the needs of the state or, or business or anything like that. Um, and at the same time, it's a bit of a paradox, right? Because education is introducing individuals into the forms and customs of the culture that they live in. And so an education that didn't teach students how to read wouldn't be much of an education. And likewise, an education that doesn't give students uh, a history of the world and of their society in the way that that society sees itself would be a rather inadequate education overall. So balancing those two needs, Steiner is calling for an educational reform that will be true to the being of the child and will teach out of uh, where the children are and how they want to learn rather than out of a um, a schema or a, uh, a curricular set of frameworks and guidelines and goals. So Steiner is calling for, again, 12 years before the opening of the first Waldorf School, Steiner is calling for an education that is in harmony with the unfolding development of the child. And that right there is one of those keys that will be incorporated into Waldorf education when it's established and remains fundamental to this day. And that is that uh, the education happens out of child development and not out of some curricular goals for the end of 12th grade mapped backwards over the earlier grades all the way down to early childhood. So this book, The Education of the Child, by uh, Rudolf Steiner and the five lectures that it contains are a wonderful background to uh, what would become Waldorf education, and you can see them as uh, kind of Steiner reaching out or casting about for an opportunity to put these educational impulses into practice. And then at the same time, it's going to be years later before somebody, in this case Emil Malt in Stuttgart, comes forward and says, Dr. Steiner, I'd like to actually do that. I'd like to actually create one of these schools you've been talking about. And when that happened, then Waldorf Education came into existence.